The Secrets of Technology is brought to you by the StarQuest Production Network and is made possible by our many generous patrons. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit sqpn.com slash give. You're listening to The Secrets of Technology. Hi, I'm Dom Bettinelli, and you're listening to The Secrets of Technology, where we discuss the technology news that's important to you from a uniquely Catholic point of view. Except tonight, we have a very special episode. This is our 100th episode. We'll get to that in a second. But first, I want to introduce our very expansive panel tonight. We have <laughs> everyone who's, uh, who joins us on the show tonight. Joining me today today are Thomas and her ho. Hey, Thomas. Hey, Dom. Joanne Mercer. Hello, Joanne. Hey, Dom. Uh, Pat Scott. Hi, Pat. Howdy from Texas. Uh, Jack Barazzini. Hi, Jack. Hey, Dom. Father Andrew Kinstetter. Hi, Father Andrew. Hello there. And Father Corey Stika. Hi, Father Corey. I see last but not least, no. but maybe it's on least. <laughs> yeah, How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> your seniority, actually, is the, you're the senior member. So uh, in in a long length of time, not age, oh my gosh, I'm already getting myself in trouble. <laughs> so yeah, I better stay <laughs> 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 So uh, just a little bit of the history of the show, especially if you're relatively new. We started the show. Our first episode was January 10th, 2019. So we've been going for basically about two years now. I mean, we, we're a weekly show, 100 episodes. That's about right. Uh, originally, our, our panelists consisted of Father Corey, Joanne, Thomas, and Father Michael Gossett, who uh, started with us. And uh, Pat, you started joining us. In episode 12, as a fill-in panelist, so that was uh, awesome to have. Father Andrew, you joined us in episode 15. Jack, you started as a fill-in in in episode 17, and you became a regular with episode 49, replacing Father Michael, who stepped away. So, uh, And from that point, so for the last 50 episodes, we've had a pretty steady uh, group of panelists, for which I am very grateful. I enjoy having you all on the show with me uh, each week, and uh, it's been a blast. So I really do enjoy uh, and want to thank you all now as we as we start our next hundred episodes beyond. And uh, just a little, just a couple other things. In the past ninety nine episodes, we every week we do a pick of the week. So in the past ninety nine episodes, we've had a total of three hundred and six picks of the week. That's awesome. Wow. It, it doesn't add, it doesn't add up correctly because sometimes we, people sneak in a second pick. Uh, you know, <laughs> in those ones. Uh, I've done that, uh, and I because I'm on every week. I've made 101 picks of the week so far. And let me tell you, <laughs> nice. having to make a pick every week is could be could be a little uh, something. Sometimes I'm dragging the barrel. What do I got? Uh, all right. So this time, week we decided to do something a little fun, a little something you know, just because it's a special episode. We're gonna do our favorite tech of all time. And I was tempted to to say you know something like indoor plumbing, you know, but because that's that's a technology, right? <laughs> but I think I think in wheel. general we're sticking with consumer electronics technology, perhaps maybe with one or two exceptions in there. Uh, and uh, while I I would be tempted to say podcasts, let's just stipulate podcasts and and move on from there because I I want to get to something <laughs> a little more interesting. Uh, before we begin, any any first uh, thoughts, anything you want to introductory thoughts or reflections on. Our uh, 100th episode, uh, I'm kind of springing this on you guys at the last minute. <laughs> well, it, it, it's been great to be part of it. As, as you said, you know, Joe and I were some of the first ones, you know, of course, we've been doing our little Ron Robbins and it's worked really well. And it's been a lot of fun, you know, because we've talked about some silly things. We've talked about some stuff that we enjoy, like, you know, talk about my Hackintosh, you know, and really getting that out there. We've talked about some very serious things. We've talked about issues in technology and how we use technology. And I think it's I think it's been good that we can explore all these different areas of technology. And now tonight we get to have fun and say, here's all the stuff we really, really, really like. <laughs> yes, because we're all geeks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Anyone else? It's hard to pick. It's hard to pick what your favorite, like, to yeah. limit, okay, here are my three favorite technologies. And then to think about, oh, I, I tried to limit it by, okay, what are the things that I use the most often? And it's just, man, that list could go on and on and on and on. <laughs> <laughs> they're not necessarily my favorites, but they're things that I have to use, you know? Right. Uh, so I had a, I had a an interesting time sitting down, like, what are the things that really bring me joy in the tech world? And that mm. was, uh, that's how I came up with my three. Yeah, I I had to do the same thing. I had to I had to sit down and say, so what do I use all the time that I can't live without? Mm. 
and mm-hmm. that's how I boiled it down. Although I did move a few things around. Yes, but the order that's of okay. things. <laughs> <laughs> when I guess I looked at it from the point of view of what at the time made the biggest impression on me of, mm. wow, this is changing mm. my way I do things. Mm. So that's kind of where I started with mine. I would throw out, first of all, that I'm just thankful for the podcast because this was my introduction as a co-host for the for SQPN. And yep. then that got me into doing uh, the Secrets of Star Wars. So um, I'm thankful for this podcast because this was my this was my first kind of foray into this whole adventure. Mm. Um, for me, I chose I chose them purely based on what I get super fun enjoyment out of mm-hmm. um, with, with my family <laughs> or, or even by myself. So how about you, Jack? What was your criteria? Um, I definitely leaned partially on uh, what got me into tech in the first place and Mm. partially on nostalgia for tech that I've grown up with that had a big Mm. impact on my life. Okay. It kind of sounds like we're all doing the Marie Marie Kondo wheel. What brings me joy? (laughs) What (laughs) What sparks joy? But not throw it away. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, the things that don't spark joy, I've 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 uh, given away on like Facebook Marketplace and (laughs) that sort of stuff, (laughs) or just logged out of and never gone back to. (laughs) Exactly. Mm -hmm. True. My picks were things that when I look back over my over my life, that sounds really dramatic. When I look back, though. The things that really I I look back most fondly on, the things that really uh, were formative or that I just wish I still had today that I don't have anymore, the the things that have great memories attached to them. uh, I mean, I love my iPhone. I love my iMac. You know, these the tools I have today, I I totally would would pick. But I kind of wanted to think back, you know. What what really were things that changed things for me? So, um, so that's where I where mine goes. So let's let's enough of the preliminaries. Let's get into it, Jack. Why don't we go with you first? What was what is your first pick for favorite tech of all time? All right, my number one pick is going to be um, Linux, Linux operating systems, and Ubuntu desktop in general. Good because choice. that is really was my entry point into doing something with the computer beyond just using it as an everyday user. Um, I had an old Compaq laptop. I don't think Compaq even exists anymore. That had no. Windows ME on it, and mm. it was barely running. It oh. still had a floppy drive in it, which was pretty cool, um, and a CD drive, so it was fancy. Mm-hmm. And I put uh, Ubuntu. It was probably 9.04 at that point. Um, put that up on there and ran that, and that was my first entry into open source software um, and then tinkering around with computers. So. That's my first pick. That's awesome. Awesome. Which he totally stole from me, and I didn't get to put on mine because I waited too long to make my list. <laughs> <laughs> you lose. <laughs> <Aww. laughs> you get sniped. <laughs> it's be a double pick. <laughs> awesome. Great. Father Andrew, what's your first pick for favorite tech? You know, mine is in a similar line as Jack. Uh, my pick is Windows 95. So I actually have the... <laughs> wow. Yeah. Whoa. So, so this is the instruction wait. manual for the Windows 95. He's I'm showing it off manual. to the panel. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, is that like an actual legal copy of Windows 95? Those exist? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is not VMware. In fact, the actual tower is sitting downstairs in my basement right now, and it still works. Mm. So <laughs> that, I mean, like... Technology nowadays is sort of like meant to break after, you know, one or two years. So you buy the newer thing, but this thing mm-hmm. is like a beast. So, um, but I, I pick it because it was, it's in the same line as Jack, that it was like, it was our first family computer by the way it cost with a printer. It cost, in fact, I have a price <laughs> quote here too. It cost $3,727 and 50 cents. Oh wow. yeah. Then that's in and 1990 what dollars? <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> And just to to give a little more context, that was one gigabyte hard drive and eight <sighs> megabytes of RAM. Wow, ninety five. Yeah, <laughs> we'll so, <need> more. <laughs> um, yeah. So so for me, that was like our first family computer. And then when my parents upgraded to, I believe it was Windows either ninety eight or XP, they fixed their Windows ninety five and gave it to me for Christmas. So this was the first computer that I got to like physically tear apart and like try to understand what was going on on the inside. And it sparked in me that desire to to understand technology in a deeper way and to have fun. Nice. There were there were some really cool games um mm-hmm. on Windows ninety five. Space Quest four was oh, my <laughs> favorite. <laughs> and side note there that that dealt with time travel. So that also feeds into my whole sci fi, Star yeah. Wars, Star Trek, <laughs> Doctor Who yep. 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 So yep. <laughs> Windows ninety five. That awesome. was the the software that I could play with and not and I didn't care if I wrecked it. I just figured it out. Nice. Cool. Does anybody else have any fond memories of Windows 95? 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> fond uh, memories, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, I, I do kind of have fond memories, although I eventually settled with Windows 98 SE for that generation of OSs, but I remember I was in the Air Force when 95 came out, and I bought the 13 floppy box of Windows 95 <laughs> oh the upgrade. Yeah. Uh, and it was because the system I had bought was a 486 that came with Windows 3.1, which Windows 3.1 worked, but 95 was a big upgrade to Windows mm-hmm. 3.1. I mean, it was, it, it, the, the word revolutionary is thrown around, but it definitely changed the way you used at least Windows based computers. Wasn't right. that the first one that you had? I mean, uh, the mouse and the user interface that was kind of what we know today in, in Windows. Mm-hmm. The start button yeah. and yeah. 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 I mean, there's there's a lot of lot of stuff that came over from three one to to ninety five. You know, location of the X, you know, the close buttons and all that, and a lot of the base. And you could make Windows ninety five look like Windows three one if you really wanted to. <laughs> I don't know why you <laughs> would, but you could. Like Windows ninety five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could go their way around too. But it was a uh, yeah, it was a big improvement over three one. Nice. Yeah, I started with Windows two point uh, and so no, not many people remember it being around, and I'm sure there was a Windows 1 somewhere. But yeah, when 95 <laughs> came out, that was a, oh, wow, this is a big deal. So yeah, yeah mm-hmm. I appreciate that. All right. Joanne, what's your pick for favorite tech of all time? Well, I've always been a television addict ever since I was a child and my parents put a TV in my room at the age of like four. <laughs> so Keep her busy. Uh, yeah, really, as an only child of older parents, it was yep. like, ooh, good, she can watch this. Um, so everything that I've liked in tech sometimes has, has been revolving around television. So... I was a big, I went from the HBO box to cable and then cable wasn't good enough. So I said, okay, my friends in California are all telling me about this wonderful product called a TiVo. So, all right, (laughs) it's better than cable. It'll allow me to do a whole bunch of different things. So I got a TiVo bolt. And I loved this thing. You could put a cable card in it. You could hook it up to an antenna. It didn't matter. It would do it. it, The thing about it was that it would stop the commercials. (laughs) I wanted that feature of not always having to scroll through commercials. Um, And there was a lot of things. I mean, it, it had its ups and downs, but it was a great little machine. And it was the one thing that got me to really think about cord cutting. Mm-hmm. So, you know, this this was like my gateway into finally cutting the cord from cable and going into starting to do the streaming thing. Now, at my age, you would think, well, you know, I'm, I'm just used to sitting there and letting the TV roll all night, but I'm not. I, I want to see good programming and I want to see it on my own time. Very mm-hmm. nice. So mm-hmm. the, you can't get these anymore, unfortunately. I still have one if somebody wants it because <laughs> I can't use it anymore. Yeah. Um, but it's it's because I've gone on to bigger and better things. Um, but it really is a, a it was a wonderful device to to sort of help you to own your own TV watching instead of letting somebody else tell you what to watch at what time. So I had a TiVo that I got, I think it was 2000 or 2001. It was a Sony branded TiVo. And Ooh. I loved that, that, that box. And it had, I, you know, I upgraded it with bigger hard drives and it would hold, uh, you know, days and days worth of programming. And it was fantastic. And it, let me tell you when, when it became really important for me was, and this is kind of a downer, but 9-11, when 9-11 happened, mm. it, for those of you who remember, they, for weeks, it was wall-to-wall news coverage. There was mm-hmm. nothing but news on. And it got really heavy after a while. And finally, I just couldn't take it anymore. And I, I'm like, what have I got on the TiVo? And I've realized I had like 30 episodes of The Simpsons. And I just oh, oh, turned on The okay. Simpsons <laughs> and I laughed and laughed and laughed. And it was such a great relief. And that back then, that was... Like unless you own DVDs or VHS mm-hmm. tapes of mm-hmm. stuff, the, that was really the only way you could watch. Like stuff was we didn't stream stuff; it wasn't just available online. Uh, and so I really appreciate TiVo being the original DV. Well, TiVo and what was the other one? Uh, that there was. There's always two, and one loses. <laughs> TiVo was having yeah. to be the winner on that one, right? Uh, I forget what they were or something or other revolution. Or, I forget what it is. Anyway, but TiVo won. And uh, and but it was great to have TiVo and I'm and it's 
I think it ushered in an era in which people decided, I want to be able to watch TV when I want, how I want, and really gave us things like the iTunes store with, with you know, you could buy mm-hmm. TV shows and movies and, and everything else that came with it. And where I want, because it also yeah. had an app, although the app wasn't the greatest thing. But <laughs> it, it's that thing now where everybody's mimicked that. Mm-hmm. So whatever you have, you can watch it on an app on whatever. Well, you could say, Dom, that our Plex servers are very much extensions of that. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. I just got into that this week. <laughs> so <laughs> super excited about it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Plex servers and all of that, like all the, the media center stuff. I remember Windows Media Center, all that stuff all kind of came after TiVo really proved that, you know, I mean, we, we it became a verb. We TiVo stuff. You know, that mm-hmm. was in the 2000s. Uh, it was a it was it had become a verb by then. So, yeah, that is a that is a great pick. It's a very it's, it was a th- as, as a personal pick, but also in general as a tech pick. It really changed the uh, the landscape. Awesome. All right, Thomas, you're up. What's your pick? All right. So my pick for number one is 3D printing, just the whole concept of it in general. Um, I, I it's it's still in its infancy and that's the thing that really just blows my mind is the things that you can accomplish with 3d printing right now and the fact that it's just starting like we are just starting to touch the tip of the iceberg with what it's capable of uh so you know i have my 3d printer uh my ender 3 uh if anybody's interested in getting one i definitely recommend it uh it's cheap it's under $200 sometimes, like right around the $200 mark. And uh, the filament's cheap. That's the thing that really messes with people's heads. Uh, I can get like a kilogram of filament for about fi- uh, 15 bucks, and um, it'll last me for a good long time. I make many figures with it. I've made shelf uh, supports for my wife that, you know, things have broken in the house, and I'll I say, I can print that, and I'll go and design it and <laughs> print it. And it, the, the concept of taking an idea from your brain designing it in the computer and then printing it out on a machine it will completely change your life i love it Mm, that is true that's awesome the past year we've seen that like with where they the guys 3d print designed uh uh, respirators and Mm -hmm. all that the pb and last week we talked about on the show about some guys who do like a, a, a tiktoker complained about he has parkinson's he he can't open his pill bottles so a bunch of people just got together and designed a a revolutionary new pill bottle for people who have trouble manipulating small things. Yeah, it is amazing. It it really is. And it's, it's a game changer because, you know, you can, uh, the the thing that I think a lot of people miss is that it's great for prototyping because I can make a one-off thing and I don't have to put together a whole factory to do it. I design something, I make it, it fails and that's all right. I just go redesign it. Oh, I know what was wrong now. I redesign it, put it back on the board a couple hours later, I got a new thing, and it, it can fail 20 times, and that's just a few hours worth of work to get to a final product that does work. I really like the concept of open source hardware and open source blueprints. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That whole idea really fascinates yeah. me. Right, and, and that the revolutionary, uh, inexpensive technology that anyone can have really opens the door to that. Right. Yeah, that's true. Awesome. Great pick. Uh, Father Corey, what's your pick? So I'm going to, like uh, others, I'm going back to a uh, computer of my childhood. It's not my first computer, however. Or not the first computer we had as a kid, when I was a kid. We had a, originally a Texas Instruments 99-4A was our first computer. Oh, yeah. And that was a fun old computer, of course, because it was two kids playing with it, two young, you know, lo- lower elementary school kids. It didn't last very long. <laughs> yeah. So my parents got what has become still to this day my favorite computer. The Commodore 64. Commodore yeah. 64. <laughs> that was my elementary, junior high, high school computer. And I played on it. I programmed it. I used it for class, classwork. I, I love that thing. And, you know, to this day, I have one. It's right now it's in a box somewhere from my move over the summer. But it, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, just was, it was, of course, at the time it came out in 1983, it was, the top of the line home computer you could get. It had the best graphics available. It had the best sound available. And oh, by the way, it was cheaper than about anything else on the market except the really, really low end things like, you know, the ZX Spectrum or something like that. You know, it was the best you could get. It had its flaws. The 
the floppy drives were slow, relative speaking, because of a bug from a previous generation that Commodore's like, well, we don't want to break backward compatibility, so we're just not going to fix this. Great. Um, but it was, it for again, for the time it was powerful. It, it had a whopping one megabyte processor <laughs> or uh, mega, me, megahertz processor. It had a whole 64 kilobytes of memory. But uh, within a couple of years of coming, of coming out, the Geos operating system, graphic environment operating system came out that looked a lot like the original Mac OS and operated much like the original Mac OS on this computer. It was, and that's what I would use. I'd write all my, you know, high school papers on, on that graph on the Geos system. And it, it had a word processor, spell checker. You could get a calc program. You could get a, um, programming actually you could make your own programs for in an, an actual ide uh in a development environment so it was it was a very powerful little computer and i used the heck out of it and i loved it and i still play games off of it and <laughs> you it's can just buy fantastic them. you can buy uh like replicas with there where yes. it's, it's all integrated you can do it it'll, it'll play all the old uh software yeah they, they've they've got it now where you can plug in you know sd cards and it'll pull you know disk images or That's any of awesome. that kind of stuff. And you can program, you know, save to it and everything. It's, it's, and there's a lot of, there's actually a lot of retro development for the Commodore 64. People are doing new things with it. Um, it's, it's really impressive. They're, they're one of the big pushes now is to, there's a lot of chips in it that are cut, that were custom made by Commodore of the time that you can't get anymore, at least brand new. So there's a real push to create new versions of these chips using like FPGAs and things like that. So that we have new, you know, when your when your video chip dies in the Commodore, you can get a new one. Wow, because a lot of this stuff was what uh, it, it, not service mount, but uh, like you could you could replace these yourself. They're like through mount, I guess it is. Some some well, there's some of them are you know through mount soldered in. Some of them they did have uh, sockets. Okay, depending depending on you know when, when Commodore was really bad for depending on who the guy was that actually assembled your computer at which factory at which time, <laughs> depend on what parts you might find in there sometimes. Oh, but. wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Good pick. I like that. It, uh, it, it mirrors mine, but we'll get to that after Pat gives her pick. What's your, what's your uh, first pick for a favorite tick of all time? I guess I've used computers since 66, but the thing that gave me the most excitement was my first iPad. Because I could carry this thing around, and I could do all almost everything I was doing on a regular computer in a portable fashion, and it was, just was real exciting to me. And it was, I I have continued to upgrade and get new iPads, but that standard size iPad has been my favorite toy of all time. Um, now there are things that are newer that are that are fun also, but that was I guess to me, just such a amazing, fun thing that I didn't expect. Right. Yeah, I agree. It's It was the first computing device that felt like the future. Like, we mm. could, we've always had the computers, but this felt like you, you, it, you touch it and you manipulate it on with your fingers and you can type on the screen. It just, it felt so super futuristic when they came out. Yeah. And I I remember Bella playing on mine way <laughs> back right. when. <laughs> right, my daughter Isabella playing that when she was very little. We you know, we we could be like Picard and have the pads where we can actually read things off of <laughs> yeah. a tablet. Yeah, except Picard had stacks of them. They didn't even think of you could have multiple documents on one on a single pad. pad. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I love that when we did see that. <laughs> I I just love the iPad because especially the Pro. Because today I was rendering video on my laptop and I was using my pro to continue doing research because I didn't want to, I didn't want to interrupt the flow. <laughs> so, I mean, being able to use it as another computer is a wonderful mm. thing. Yeah. My daughter's, uh, you know, like my, my second daughter, Sophia, she, we got her an iPad as a, as a school computer to do her work on, but it, it's, I gave her my old one and it had the Apple pencil and she started drawing with it. And in in just a mm -hmm. few months, her her drawing, which all her drawings are of Star Wars figures, uh, her <laughs> her drawings have become amazing. She's like all these amazing skills, the shading, the color, the mm -hmm. and it's just like it's really helped her express herself artistically, creatively 
in this way that she she never was like her other her siblings all do you know drawing on paper and that sort of stuff that wasn't for her for whatever reason but this really gave her uh, this outlet so it's fantastic um i think for kids growing up um that's going to be all they're really going to know like my son who is four he does not understand the concept of a screen that is not a touch screen yes right like if something's paused on the tv and there's the play button on there he'll go up and try to touch it and i'm like it's not a touch screen he's like what do you mean it's not a touch screen all screens are touch screens. <laughs> that's how computers work dad come on yeah <laughs> well let me tell you even me sometimes i'll look i'll be reading a magazine and I'll tap oh. the, the side <laughs> of the magazine and go, oh, wait, no, no, no. I have to actually move the page. <laughs> Pinch and right. Zoom doesn't work on a magazine. Yeah, uh, yeah because right. I'm, I'm old. I need that bigger, please. <laughs> it's it's funny trying to teach kids how to use computers after they've gotten so used to that because there's things they just don't understand. And so, you know, that, my, my favorite moments are, are the touch screen things where they they don't realize that. And then I'm like, no, 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 you have to use your mouse to click it. And then they'll pick the mouse up and, and put the <laughs> mouse against the screen. Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 wait, hold on. That's not what I meant. And, then, um, and, and of course, yeah, every Star Trek geek is immediately going, hello, computer. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. And the other thing that really is, that's really interesting is the saving of files. It's because the iPad takes care of it for you. Like, you know, they don't realize that there's a whole thing going on behind there. Yes. Uh, and so when you try to teach them about saving files, it just blows their mind. They don't really mm-hmm. understand how that works. Right, right. Yes, that is so true. One of the other cool things that I would just point out about that is the the voice capabilities um, in Mm -hmm. Siri, you know, and uh, my dad uh, is no longer in the diaconate program. He he's discerned out. But when he was in it, he actually bought an iPad Pro to write his papers for the 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 diaconate program, because my dad is a a hunt and peck kind of typer. (laughs) And so the the voice recognition really helped him Mm -hmm. to be able to write write his papers. So, I mean, Mm -hmm. and even just using Siri for for various tasks is, is really, uh, really awesome actually how they've, and then with even the other, the other ones, the, uh, Amazon Alexa and, you know, those sorts of things. So yeah. I was going to say my brother-in-law uh, has had a, a essential tremors problem. And, uh, after it got really bad, the iPad really was something he could manipulate to some degree mm-hmm. with his hands and voice. And mm-hmm. yes, things like that for the people who have a disability are a real big help because they're lightweight. They don't have to worry about heaviness and that type of thing. That's right. Yeah, it's amazing. The the I I I don't think any of us I don't see in our list any of us picked any of the voice assistants, but just the ability to control your mm-hmm. uh, your your world around you, the lights, the you know uh, the appliances with your voice to talk to them like like star trek <laughs> you know it's like yeah. you talk to the computer i, I wish it were a little more like it we'll get we'll get there eventually <laughs> yeah, can't you can't you make like alexa respond to different wake words like can't you make her respond to computer you can oh, yeah. you can yes. yeah. so, <laughs> i was gonna do it and then i realized how often i say computer like it would yeah. be really just be crazy. <laughs> but if i had a if i had a child whose name was like that i don't want to say it out loud the thing will beep uh but if i had yeah. like a child whose name was anything close to that i would change like, you can do echo computer or the a word uh so yeah, yeah. we've trained the my kids uh, just a tangent my train my kids and my wife to whenever we're referring to it to not use the a word but to always refer to it as echo that way we, mm-hmm. you know, so we reserve mm-hmm. the word for Hold only on. invoking the deity in the box. <laughs> <laughs> I need a box. It's, <laughs> yes. it's bad enough, you know, with the with with Google, anything that sounds like "Hey, G," mm-hmm. yes, immediately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, I know. All right. So this has come around to me. I get to pick my favorite tech of all time, and my favorite tech is my beloved. Apple II GS computer that I had uh, in the mid to mid eighties, and I had it around like the late eighties to the early nineties uh, when it was. Uh, well, let's just say it disappeared around the same time as a, a roommate who uh, we ended on not so good terms. <laughs> so, no, I'm not accusing shame. anyone of anything, but uh, right. uh, I think it was an accident. Actually, someone was helping him move out, and they didn't realize. That uh, it was by that point, I had a Mac and it was in the basement and I think they took it. So uh, I was very sad afterwards. But the Apple II GS was such a great it was the first real like mass market color GUI computer like you had that it was before the Mac. It was there. It had a a, the color mouse interface. 
uh, had amazing games. I, I always talk about the games because you know, you know, because mm-hmm. I was I was mm-hmm. but Load Runner, Choplifter, yeah. Civilization Two, all the way back then, there was a, a Apache helicopter which seemed so real at the time. Like this is like <laughs> flying a real helicopter. <laughs> the graphics were amazing. You know, uh, Flight Sim when Microsoft still mm-hmm. made Flight Sim for the for Apple products. Uh, just I loved those things. I even had uh, the actual like I had a throttle and stick for playing flight sims. I was in a flight sim group online. It was just, it was, uh, uh it was awesome. Just the, a great computer. And even, um, I, I remember some one of the peripherals I had. I love this thing. It was so. It seemed so futuristic. It was a card you could get for it. And I, I had to, I googled to find out what it was because I couldn't remember exactly. It's the Applied Engineering Ram Keeper from Carrollton, Texas. They, and you could have up to five megabytes of solid state storage in a battery powered RAM disk. Now, when I say wow. battery powered, it had a gel cell that looked like you ripped it out of a motorcycle sitting on your desk, <laughs> plugged into the back of this card on, like, so that it would maintain power in between you when the computer was off. So you, you basically had like this, this always on drive. So you didn't have to have to reboot. You just put your system on it. And so then the the floppy drives were for you know your programs. Uh, it was I loved that computer. It was awesome, and uh, I do miss it. Uh, it was it was it was such a great you know early. It was my intro. Essentially, I I, I had used Apple's before that uh, at school and that sort of thing. But this was my first my computer. So mm. and and I do think yeah. Father, it it probably cost like more than a, a a good iMac today like your uh, Windows 95 computer so uh, <laughs> yeah I, I remember that well you know it was it was funny when I was in high school and this was early 90s you know the small town Culbertson high school uh until mid 90s when they started you know more grants and stuff were available for technology advancement their computer lab was full of Apple IIs it was a computer you know with the monochrome mm-hmm. screen and the two mm-hmm two disk drives underneath the screen and everything, you know, oh, the yeah. stereotypical Apple II setup, mm-hmm. which I kind of kicked myself that I didn't try to get one of those when they changed them out, but that's mm. another story. <laughs> um, but uh, the teacher, he had a 2GS. That was his computer. Oh, Everybody, yeah. all, we all had to use the monoc- monochrome Apple IIs. He got the 2GS. He yeah. had a nice computer. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that, that's true. There was a, my, the first Apple computer I used was an Apple II Plus, maybe. Uh, in a in, in a uh, drawing class in high school that uh, as a technical drawing class, and it had a graphics tablet with a pen mm. attached by a cord. It was 16 bit. You could make circles and you could draw squares <laughs> and draw lines. And it seemed like the most amazing thing ever uh, for the time. And this is like <laughs> 1982, I guess. But yeah, you know, so uh, yeah, the great stuff. All right, so that's our first round of picks. I do want, before we get to our second round, I do want to take a moment to thank our patrons who make it possible for us to have 100 episodes of the Secrets of Technology so far, uh, including this time Lavinia S, Christian B, Clarice R, Ray M, and Aaron M. Their generous donations at sqpn.com slash give make it possible for us to continue the Secrets of Technology and all the shows at StarQuest. Now's a great time to become a StarQuest patron, thanks to a generous gift from a StarQuest supporter. When you start a new Patreon monthly pledge at sqpn.com slash give, by the way, tax deductible in the U.S., we are a 501c3. When you become a new Patreon uh, patron, the first three months will be matched by an equal amount from our donor. So if you become a new patron at, say, $10 a month, after three months, our donor will give $30 to StarQuest to support all our shows, including this one which makes your gift go even further. So if you've been thinking of becoming a StarQuest patron, now's the time. Visit sqpn.com slash give today. All right, that brings us to our second round of picks of our favorite tech of all time. So Jack, what's your second pick for favorite tech? So I really like my iPhone, and I like that you can have anything on it. It's got a camera, you can play videos on it, you can listen to music on it. But I kind of miss my old iPod mini, the black and white screen Mm. and the quick wheel. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Said that simplicity mm-hmm. where yeah. you could hold like a thousand songs on it, and that was a big deal. All it did was play music. There was no Spotify or anything like that. I just yeah. missed that simplicity. I remember I had a, I had one of, the, one of the original iPods. I think it was one of the first generation. It had a FireWire interface and, and, and all that. And it just, it was solid. It felt solid in your hand. I love that feel of the click wheel. 
you know, turning mm. it. Yeah, that was a great little device. It just felt so good. And it, it, it was just so cool, like you said, to carry a thousand songs in your pocket. Yeah. That's awesome. The worst thing about it was that uh, if you listen to albums like Dark Side of the Moon, it didn't do the track joining at the right. end. So you get like a half second cut in between everything. Yeah. No. And I like to listen to a lot of those long concept yeah. albums. <laughs> so that was the worst part about uh, it. But I missed that thing. <laughs> now, I'll tell you an, a very interesting thing that uh, a lot of people don't know about that. If you have any kind of electric field thing going on with your body, you can ruin those things. Because my wife, every single time I got one of those, I would keep her from touching them because she would touch it and it would be destroyed <laughs> it just would not oh, that's funny. because it has that kind of haptic um, electric feel to it you know when you, yeah. when you touch the wheel mm -hmm. and it doesn't actually click it's just you're moving your finger around on it so something about her energy field like just destroyed those things every single time she got her hands on them wow have you that's have funny. you read any harry dresden novels because in those, like, wizards destroy technology. Right. So maybe That's... your wife's a wizard. I... <laughs> I've, I've had this debate with her at times. <laughs> well, my mom used to do the same thing with watches. She never could keep a watch. Mm -hmm. We tried pendant yeah. watches. We tried wrist watches. We tried pocket watches. Every one would run for about a day, and then they would die, mm -hmm. <laughs> never Ooh. to be resurrected. I think I detect an, a future episode of Jimmy Akin's Mysterious World on this one. Oh. There we go. There we go. <laughs> awesome. Such an electric personality. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and I think one of my favorite things about the iPod, especially those the, the older ones, was like they were just a natural progression from like mixtape. Yep. To mm -hmm. uh, mm. I, I mean, my my primary mode was creating a, a CD and burning a CD with with certain songs that I liked, but then you could only fit maybe ten songs. 10 to 12 songs. Mm -hmm. I mean, depending on the Sounds time. Right. So, so the, the iPods were like, Oh, you can do like, yeah, a thousand songs. And so yeah. I can have my playlist be my, my CD mix, if you will, and not have to swap through CDs. So those, those were the good old days. Well, it was, it was funny too. How many knockoff MP3 players like mm -hmm. followed the iPod? And yeah, the the iPod was my gateway drug to Apple. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> many I think it was, it was most people's yep, gateway. That was definitely what ours too. Got me into the into the mode. <laughs> yep, yep, yeah. It was brilliant, brilliant move. I actually had a Diamond Rio MP3 player before that. I which, remember mm, those. Yeah, had a, oh, an yeah. SD card or something. I could put six. 16 songs on that and mm. then it was like mind-blowing to be able to do you know the ipod i could still hear the music from the commercial the first ad. the commercials were so so groundbreaking you know they so iconic so yeah do you guys remember zip drives yes i had, yes. I had, I had a new yes. player that ran on a zip drive like you could wow you could put the zip drive in wow <laughs> so it was, a, it was a tape player but it had actually like mm -hmm. you know extra capacity oh i i remember the zip click of death that's my yeah. memory oh, of zip yeah. drives <laughs> i have bad <laughs> memories of zip drives awesome all right good one good one jack uh father andrew what's your second pick so for my second pick i'm going to come to the modern uh decade and i'm going to talk about the oculus quest Mm. So the the reason that I choose this is I, I got one a couple years ago and it's a VR headset made by Facebook and the Facebook thing I just kind of ignored for the fact that I get to have this amazing experience that's immersive. So, you know, the whole idea is that you wear this headset and um, you've got controllers in both your hands, but you are you you feel like you're physically within the environment that you're that you're seeing, you know, so uh, I love it because I get to. Uh, I mean, the Star Wars games in particular, um, there's Star Wars, there's Doctor Who, the Weeping Angels are Scary. terrifying. <laughs> oh, I've, I've heard that. Just um, <laughs> like I, nope. I literally had to take the headset off of my head when I encountered them the first time because it just it scared me so much. Nope. Uh, but it's it's I mean, it's just so amazing that the technology that's in that, that you f you feel like you're part of the story. So for me, especially with Star Wars, like I've been a Star Wars fan you know, since uh, since I was in probably junior high and, and loved to read the books and watch the movies. But with the Oculus Quest, uh, this is the first time that I actually felt like I was in Star Wars, not just oh. observing or reading, <laughs> you know. So in, in uh, Vader Immortal, you you get to use a lightsaber and you can use the force and it feels natural and it's just amazingly cool. And you, you're walking like along these uh, these cliff faces and. So I, I had to show my parents and like 
my mom was like looking over the edge and it freaked her out. You know, she's standing in, a, in our living room, you know, but, but the feeling that you're literally looking down just this cliff face is just so incredibly real. And, and the technology behind it is absolutely amazing. So definitely that, that would be my, uh, one of, well, one of my favorite pieces of technology of all time. And, uh, I can't recommend it highly enough minus the Facebook connection, but kind of a necessary evil there. So, so Dom, you're, you're, you're saying that uh, we're not going to do a secrets of doctor who on the, the quest uh, weeping angels game. Huh? Oh, you well. should totally like go through that together and record it all together. That would be <laughs> awesome. when you hilarious. Let me know when you do it. <laughs> I, I, I would love to try an Oculus, but I'm, I'm motion sickness. I have oh, motion sickness, no. so I don't think I could yep. actually do that by what yep. you're saying, how realistic it is. There, there are some games that you can just sit down with and play really? sitting down. So actually, I think there's a the Star Trek bridge commander. You can sit down and be the, the bridge captain. So okay. th- there might there might be some option for you, but maybe not the <laughs> Star Wars or Doctor Who ones. Well, okay. and, and there's a, a lot of the games that you can say, I want it to be comfortable or I want it to be whatever. And, and it adjusts the uh, perspective some mm-hmm. okay. so that you can choose things mm-hmm. that are, you know, lots of nature stuff, lots of travel stuff, lots of those types of things without getting into the roller coasters or whatever. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because I get I get motion sick in those 360 rooms. Right. You know, when everything's around you, it's like my yeah. peripherals. Yeah. Borrow somebody's, try <laughs> yeah, and, it, and okay. then you yeah. don't have to worry about yeah. spending money yeah. on it if you don't want Good. it. It, it, it the, the, the main, <laughs> like, visit. kind of, uh, the, the, the place where you, like, start in, like, your, your home screen, if you will, mm-hmm. is, like, this super calm cabin kind of feel. And then you can actually just sit there and watch YouTube videos if you want. So like you could, (laughs) you know, you could, I don't know if there are streaming apps for it, but you can just kind of watch, watch videos too. Well, yeah, there's, there's places on there like big screen that you can pay for movies and rent them just like you would on iTunes and, and be in a group with other people, et cetera. So, and you're, you're not doing any moving around. You're just seeing the Mm -hmm. movie. So, okay. There's hope for me. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I was going to say that I remember um, the first time I tried that, uh, tried an Oculus, and I was like, it's going to be cool, but it's not going to be what people say it is. And it really is mind blowing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was very skeptical to start off with and was blown away. Yeah. Well, we're going to have a, uh, an upcoming episode where we're going to, uh, Pat and Father Andrew and I are going to talk about Oculus because uh, we, we just all got three. one here. So <laughs> we uh, all three have one. Oh. Yeah. I figured out how to <laughs> stream it to my Apple TV. So mm-hmm. that the kids yep. can watch while, while I'm doing <laughs> well, it. Oh, that's <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, they like to laugh at me. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, the best, the best videos of those are the ones where you're watching the person do something, and they're like leaning into a car, and then they just fall over. Yeah, that's why you want the video of us uh, doing the Weeping Angels one. Exactly. Ah! Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, when Darth Vader walked up behind me in, in Vader Immortal, it oh, was yeah. like, ah. Oh. <laughs> well, and, nice. and to like, to have him walk towards you and see how tall he is even yes. compared to me like it's it's reflective of like i'm six two and i still had to look up to him yes nice. david Proz so, was six yeah. nine and in the suit yeah. he's like seven feet so yeah yeah that's awesome i haven't done vader mortal yet i've been kind of saving oh. it until i have some time and i think maybe tomorrow i will tomorrow night maybe <laughs> <laughs> we'll see but uh yeah now i really want to <laughs> good good yes pick. yes good yes pick. Joanne, what's your next pick? I was going to continue the TV mode, but I want to go to something that I feel is really freeing. I mean, I love my iPhone also, but I always, I I did not have a Dick Tracy, any kind of (laughs) affection towards, but yet I love my Apple Watch. I do. It's what I want it to do is what it does. I have the cellular model so that I don't have to carry a brick in my pocket everywhere I go. And, you know, it has the health features. It has the fitness features. Um, To me, it's freeing. And the more I hear that it might become its own little phone is very intriguing to me. I think because I love my iPad, I would ditch a phone in order to, if I could have it on my wrist. Because to me, that's that's what I need. 
Um, plus the fall feature. I'm old now, so <laughs> you know <laughs> the fall. Well, and and I people laugh at that, and then you hear the stories. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You yep. know, about oh, yes. I was in a car with water up to my nose and my watch called emergency. You know, I mean, these are this is a valuable device that has a little bit of a mind of its own, you know, and it can do for you when you can't. Your phone can't do that unless you shake it or, you know, do all kinds of other things. But the watch will. So it's just because it's a freeing thing. And I think that's that's what I love about love it love about it the most i'm very optimistic for its future too like there's been some rumors and we'll talk about them in an upcoming episode uh, a little more in more detail but uh like one of the things the they're getting very close to having the glucose monitoring yeah Mm -hmm. you know optical glucose monitoring through your skin which it would be revolutionary for diabetics huge uh then uh, and then things like uh the 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 new beta and well I don't want to get into details because I want to save this for next week but there's a, the new beta for iOS coming out which will uh, solve some of the problem of the mask face ID thing if you yes. have a watch mm. and stuff like that. like I've been paying with Apple Card uh, Apple Pay on my watch ever since pandemic struck so that it, because the people on the other side they don't want to be taking my money you know they don't want to be handling everybody's money and cards and stuff and it's just I don't have to touch the keypad I don't have to do anything I just my I just put my wrists up so yeah when I did that when I did that before covid people would look at me like ooh now it's like now it's like thumbs up yeah thank you yeah <laughs> you know it was it was funny though when the apple watch first came out I was you know of course the first thought was oh dick tracy is coming to life um <laughs> You but you watch it, videos. It, 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 yeah. But but it was uh you know, I thought though, what if this is the future? That we won't be carrying around uh, mm-hmm. you know, a brick, a glass and metal and plastic brick, but we will just have watches with earbuds. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's well, I mean, that's what Apple's aiming towards, obviously. And glasses. And I think they would almost <laughs> you know, and, and glasses, glasses, yeah. I I I I suspect that that's not going to happen though. Like I actually prefer my regular watch over an Apple watch and I, and I use my Apple watch for working out. And, and in fact, I mean, that's for me, that's the biggest draw is I like, I used it on my triathlon. So I, I swam with it. I biked with it. I, I ran with it and it tracked it all and heart rate and everything. But for ordinary wear, I definitely prefer my, my nicer, uh, uh, automatic watch. Well, it's funny that you say that because pre-COVID, when I would dress up for work, <laughs> um, I would wear, I would alternate it with a regular watch. But now this thing has been in my wrist on my wrist for eleven months, and mm-hmm. I can't see going without it anymore. Yeah, I was skeptical Apple Watch at first. I'm like, this isn't for me. I don't, I don't see a, a use for it in my life. Then after a couple of generations, they'd added enough stuff to it where it felt like this has some meaning for me. And I love the ability to just to get like notifications and and, and do things without having to pick up my phone and, and potentially get pulled into something else. I could just look at my watch. I uh, see I got a notification. I got a Slack from Jack. OK, he's taking care of things on the website. Thank you, by the way, Jack, for saving the website today. <laughs> if you were trying to get to SQPN on the Wednesday afternoon, you have noticed there was issues. Uh, but, you know, I can I can I, I could do things. I can get a lot done just with my watch. And I really love that. So uh, it is it is interesting, though, that there is a generational uh, nostalgia or or kind of hearkening back, whether it's uh, uh, analog or not smart watches or records versus mp3s and that mm-hmm. sort of stuff it's very interesting mm-hmm. to see all right father Corey. uh i'm sorry thomas you're next i didn't mean to pick, skip you that's all right <laughs> yeah, <no worries. laughs> skip a generation. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well i don't think it's that much we're not that we're not that far off i know <laughs> uh, uh, i uh, so for my pick i picked um the python programming language uh nice. which uh, that was kind of my entry when I first got started uh, with programming. I I was already a teacher. I was I already had kind of a career going and uh, was just dabbling in web design. And then I, I I got bored with web design because there just there was only so much you could do, and it basically ended up just being like you know you wrote a script and that was it. And so I I figured there's got to be more to this. There's got to be something different. And I started looking into programming languages. So I picked up Java Java Ruby and uh, python and 
tried to learn them all and and then i was like okay this is ridiculous i'm just going to go with python because python was easy and literally if you can write uh, a series of instructions on a napkin you can write python code and that's that's just how simple it is and it's one of the most powerful languages out there at the moment uh it gets used virtually everywhere i think anybody who knows how to code knows a little bit of python at the very least to just be able to get some quick things done uh again with the kind of prototyping concept so uh for for me this was like my entry into the world the deeper world of computers of of security of design of the way things work uh and you know i was i was a reading teacher before all before all of my entry into tech <laughs> so this, that's kind of you know it, it fit so perfectly because you can actually read the code and it makes sense it's not like um this archaic weird uh self-referencing odd thing you can actually read the code and understand <laughs> what it does and it has you know context and main ideas and everything to it so definitely python uh, as a language is fantastic yeah, I, I've, I've uh, dipped my toes in a lot of computer languages between basic off the Commodore 64 and assembly language and uh, Ada, if you're familiar with that one, that's the one the military fell in love with for a few years until they realized, no, it's really not that great of a programming language. But anyways, uh, <laughs> C++, um, PHP, you know, so I, I've done a bunch of different programming languages and I'm kind of I'm working on a project that I hope someday will end up on on as an actual website uh, in Python. And it really is a great, easy language, especially if you have any grounding in any programming language like basic, it's easy to pick up and kind of figure out what it's doing. You know, you, you learn the, okay, you do this to create a function. You do this to create a procedure. You do this, you do this, you do this. Okay. Got it. Nice. Nice. Um, Pat, what was your first language that you learned? Uh, neat three. It's a assembly language for a NCR computer. Oh, okay. And then I got to do one that had macros in it. We could actually <laughs> do more than one little tiny command at a time. And then after that, when I finally got into the state, we did database languages, basically Fox, uh, DBase, Foxbase, uh, Foxbase Pro, uh, or Fox Pro, pardon me. And then uh, on into, I never got into C or some of the others. That by that time, I had moved into networking and personal computer stuff. But yeah, I, I, I've had many, many years as a programmer, and I finally stopped programming in my sleep. <laughs> I used to do that. You know, people say you can't read while you're asleep. No, that's not true. Oh, I used can. to program in my yeah. sleep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can. That's but awesome. uh, yeah, yeah. Assembly was, was a real challenge. It really was. But I did that for five years. Oof. I remember, I've tried my hand at a lot of languages. I Started with basic, like like Father Corey mentioned. I tried to do the uh, assembly for sixty five oh two for the old Apple twos. Uh, that didn't get far, but uh, I've always I've always I've tried a lot of Pascal. Um, I keep trying. I keep going back. Uh, maybe I'll try Python this time. We'll see. It's the best. <laughs> give it a shot, with. man. Yeah, it really give it is. a try. It's, All right, I'll, it's pretty. I will, impre I'm really impressed by it. I will give it a shot and it, introduce my kids to it. I want them to program. All right, Father Corey, you are next. What is yours? So I am going with something, actually, Pat, that goes back to way back when you kind of first started on computers, but has grown to be worldwide. And I can guarantee you that every single person on this panel has something that is running this thing, this operating system. And it's the Unix operating system. Now I see I'm doing singular but there's actually Unix-based operating systems, and there are Unix-like operating systems. Now, Jack mentioned one of the Unix-like operating systems because Linux is technically not a real Unix, is not licensed mm -hmm. by, et cetera, et cetera. You know, Linux is act or Unix is an actual commercial product. But Unix was developed late 60s into the 70s, and it was one of the first widespread, multi-user, multitasking, easily available operating systems. And it took off like wildfire. Um, I think it started out on the uh, uh, PDP systems, the de old deck uh, PDP systems, and eventually was made cross-platform and went gangbusters. Now, I say that, you know, and, and when I started getting into, into Unix was as a server. And for many, many years, it was a server operating system. You know, you had Sun Microsystems, had their Solaris, which is what I started out with with the Air Force. IBM had AIX. You had uh, 
Deck had their their version, Deck Unix, and so on. That's digital, by the way. If for those who don't remember the digital alphas, that's Deck, um, and so on. So all these different Unixes are being developed. Uh, but eventually, Unix Linux, excuse me, Linux came out, and Linux, like I said, is the most well known of the the Unix like operating systems. It's the most common, you know, what is I just saw today, like 70% of web servers are running a Linux variant of some sort, you know, so it's everywhere. Android phones are based on a, a Linux variant. So it's, it's Linux kernel, the, the, the main basis of the operating system with the Android tool set on top of it. There is also, there, however, there's a distinction here. Linux is a Linux like, Unix like. There's an operating system that is an official Unix. It is a licensed Unix that I think each and every one of us are using. Mac OS, iOS, you know, the watch OS, yeah. <laughs> um, Darwin, the kernel for Mac OS and iOS and all that is a Unix. Mac OS is a Unix, a le legal licensed Unix, which is really, really cool. So the only thing is, Windows 10 is not a Unix. It can interface with Unix, but it uses the NT kernel, you know, from Windows NT 1, 3.1, 3.5, 4.0, oh, that tree. So that's a Microsoft thing. But it's incredible how this former server operating system that was designed as a server operating system is now used on the vast majority of smartphones, pretty much all smartphones. It's used on a large number of computers, you know, home computers. It's pretty impressive what, what uh, Unix can do. And like I said, I started out with it in the Air Force doing server administration. I set up my computer, that, that one computer that had Windows 3.1, then later Windows 95. Well, that became a Linux box eventually because mm -hmm. I wanted to learn Unix better. And that was obviously a free way to do it. I think that was 40 floppy, drive, floppy disks when I downloaded that <laughs> first version of Slackware Linux in 1996, I think it was. So... But it's just it's exploded, and it's in Unix is everywhere. These Unix or Unix-like operating systems are in your set-top boxes. They're in your mm -hmm. car. They're mm -hmm. everywhere. It's surveillance amazing. systems. Surveillance systems. <laughs> yeah. Pretty much everything. Yeah. They're embedded, embedded systems, home systems. You name it. Awesome. That is a great pick. That is great. I mean, another one of those technologies that's changed everything. So, Pat, what is your second pick? Well, since most of my things that y'all that y'all have been talking about, uh, you've already included these. I'm going to use a combination. Basically, I just got a Quest Two back in October, and with the watch paired with the Quest, paired with an app that runs on the Quest, that's going to what I'm going to be talking about. And that is, I am 73. I don't like to exercise. I have never been an exerciser. The most <laughs> exercise I've ever done is bowling. Uh, well, I take it back. I did do racquetball for a couple of years. But <laughs> I don't like to exercise. I don't like to go walking. The Quest has changed that dramatically. There is an app that's on there called Supernatural. They could have used a better name as far as I'm concerned, but that's what they're calling it. Basically... It's like you've got a personal coach that comes on for a session. You are standing in gorgeous places, like you're, a, you're at the Galapagos Islands, or you're on uh, looking up at Tibet, or you're looking, uh, you're in uh, uh, Iran, or uh, the desert, or Death Valley, and then you've got all of this licensed, well-known music by in lots of genres. And you can pick, like, do I want a 20-minute session or do I want an eight-minute session? Or there's meditative sessions or there's stretching exercises sessions. But then as you go through this, you're using the hand controllers as kind of a lance or a bat. And then you start getting the old, you know, targets coming at you. And you get a lot of upper body, lower body, because you're squatting, you're lunging, you're stretching, you're hitting, you're trying to get it with power, you're looking for accuracy, and your heart rate goes up, mm. and it's addictive. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> and, and it's like, I've never exercised. And now, for the last four months, I don't think I've missed more than two days at a time. Wow. And, and I'm doing 30 to 
an hour, 30 minutes to an hour, depending upon whether I do one short session, one long session, or I do, sometimes I'll do a, a short session, a long session, and then I'll go play Beat Saber for a while. <laughs> and Beat Saber is fun, but it, over time, you start using smaller movements with it to get better accuracy and get better scores. With Supernatural, you're exercising all over. And I was really surprised how how effective I feel it is now. For somebody who's an athlete, they're going to say, it's not the same as going to a gym. But quite frankly, with my history of procrastination, <laughs> I have tried gym memberships. I don't make it to there more than a couple of times. And then I'm paying for a month that I've never used. And I can do this in a five by five or a three by three because I can. You can do it in a very small space, um, and I, and it's easy to do. It doesn't matter whether it's raining or shining or or icing out there. And it, to me, it's been a big change for a seventy something year old lady who's never exercised. And so, to me, that's the most exciting thing this year. Awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, I've thought like, oh, I should have a treadmill or something so I could do exercise without having to go. To a gym or something, but I have no room for that here. But with the with the Oculus, it's gonna that that'll be very different. That I'm I'm pleased with that uh, idea of being able to. to oh, do and that. and the the watch too. Basically, it's using your Apple Watch or a Fitbit or something else like that to keep track of your heartbeat and mm. and uh, to see. And the and the Quest itself has built in things for haptic, and so they can tell sense uh, how much power you're hitting and accuracy and all that. So that all rolls in together and. You can you can see the the progress in, in in your past history and it's it's really fun. Oh, they've also got a one month free trial, so you can try it out for a whole month before you've committed to paying for it. <laughs> and once yeah, you so. get addicted because it becomes a habit, which is awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, thank you. That's a good one. So I'll I'll finish things up here with my uh, pick. And this was a tough one. I had to I kind of go back and forth on which one. But uh, since I already did the 2GS, I'm not going to do the 2C. That's a sneaky pick. Uh, I'm going to say uh -huh. instead, <laughs> this is really about online community in general. But I, I want to start by talking about the first online community that I really, really, Guru really enjoy. Uh, it was originally called Apple Link Personal Edition. And then it became Apple Online. And then it became America Online AOL. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. oh, I was a charter of that history. Yeah. It, and so it was originally Apple Inc., which was an internal corporate uh, community. And then they they extended it out to users. And and I was a charter subscriber to AOL. I remember when I quit and they're like, do you you're going to give up your charter subscriber, you know, status? I'm like, I I'll <laughs> I'll survive. Uh, but um, <laughs> but it was such a great experience from there. And I went to CompuServe uh, after that. And it was such a great experience. The first time I encountered people who were, you know, who were not local to me that I had similar interests and I could interact with. I mean, that's this podcast is an example of that. You know, I've been in the same room with half of you or more. Well, actually, four out of six of you uh, at one point <laughs> or another. But all of you, except for one, I've I, I came to know through online, the community through that 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 experience. And uh, Pat, I came to know you because I married your daughter. But that's yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> in case anybody's wondering what, what who the seventh, uh, the sixth person is. Uh, so, uh, but AOL was the beginning. It had these community groups and and you know people with shared interests. And I loved the graphical interface. That was really cool. I know that there were com online communities before that. There were news groups and BBSs and that sort of stuff. But this was really the first widespread consumerization of this of this technology that really connects us and I know it has its problems today in social media uh that that exist but there's so much good that came about with this from the beginning and that continues to happen and so I don't want to forget that and that's why I make this my uh my second pick of my favorite tech of all time so there's there's a commodore connection to this apple link Oh, yeah. It was developed in conjunction with a company called Quantum Computing. Quantum Computing made Quantum Link, which was an online system for the Commodore 64, including graphical interface and so on. They also even had an online, if you remember the old point and click like Maniac Mansion, uh, Lucas Films or Lucas Arts uh, mm -hmm. point and click, they actually had developed an online game with Lucas Arts. 
for oh. this Quantum Link on the Commodore 64. Sadly, I didn't have a modem for my Commodore 64, so I never got to experience <laughs> it. But, but yeah, so there, this this and yeah, the the two of them kind of merged and became America Online, and then right, uh, eventually was. America Online was the uh, the. Uh, coaster of choice for it geeks throughout the world <laughs> yes. and, and the first walled garden yes they only let you yes. stay within there <laughs> right right i remember that the original yeah first it was just by the kind of computer you owned but and then but just if you were an aol you weren't in cut you couldn't communicate with copy store folks then i remembered when they had that internet gateway they, they finally opened up yeah that was that was big all right Don, so I'm, that was I'm, yeah. Can I can I throw in one thing quick? Um, sure. I really appreciate that you brought this up because uh, you you're hitting on even just a bigger thing about technology in general is how it connects us or how it has the ability to connect us. It has the ability to to hurt and destroy too. But you know, um, I, I mean, things like social media. The reason I'm on there is to be connected to the people that I love and my parishioners. You know, I'm not on there for for the hate and the vileness, you know, but like my Instagram, I've connected with people from Canada, from Florida, from I mean, you guys and um, you know, and even when I was in um high school, like I was I was kind of I was verbally bullied and and kind of the the goody two shoes, the you know, um and I found connections online through through a through a um a f- message board. Uh, through Kim Commando's uh, website. And like to find a community that that supported me was really, really important. And then especially nowadays with with COVID and all of this stuff, technology has this amazing ability to bring us together when we're forced to be apart. And so that I think is just a really important thing to highlight. And so I'm glad you brought out the community aspect. Yeah, Absolutely. my brothers, way back when we were on CompuServe together, and that was, you know, way back early that kept us connected as a family and and really has has uh i see that all of these things have continued and really are are, are a great gathering place for families and friends well it, it was it's funny i remember going into the air force again in 94 and i got to my first station i was a computer programmer that was my job in the air force and so of course i'm on a networked computer with email and this is the first time I'd had email and I'm talking to my parents. It's like, you're not going to believe this, but they've got this way that you can send an, an electronic message <laughs> to someone. Nice. And of course, by this time we'd had the, you know, the email pong, which you really don't see much anymore, where mm-hmm. you send a message and they're right there and they immediately respond and you respond back. And it's like mm-hmm. emails yeah. a chat form, yeah. Yeah. you know, and uh, I, you know, it's like, and you can do this. And it's like, oh, we're never going to want that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh. <laughs> never say never. Uh, exactly. Awesome. awesome. Well, th- this is great. It's such it, it does highlight how, like you said, Father, technology has a way to bring us together. And so many of these picks talk about ways that you can that we do good with with technology, that we bring people together, that we can make make the world a better place. If, you know, if that sounds trite, but that's what we're about in. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I really do appreciate all of your your time, all of your attention to, to the to the show and uh, especially to these picks. It, I really am grateful for that. Uh, I do want to ask the listeners if you have some technology that you'd like to talk about. We'll 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 bring it up in a future episode and some feedback of your favorite tech and what tech has made a difference in your life or continues to make a difference or you're hopeful about even uh, that's coming down the pike so we, we want to hear about it uh you can let us know by commenting on the show at sqpn.com slash technology or the sqpn facebook page facebook.com slash starquest media or send an email to technology at sqpn.com and uh I, i'll try to get links to some things but i'm not sure i'll get links to everything and some of this stuff doesn't have <laughs> links so uh, we'll see what we have for links on our show notes at sqpn.com uh, if you can, we really would really appreciate it, especially as we hit 100 episodes. If you could write a review of the show in Apple Podcasts or well, any podcast directory where you get your podcast or and share the podcast with your friends. This show is only getting better and it's going only going to be more useful in the future. And it becomes more useful with your continued uh, listening and interaction with us. You, we love to hear from you. So uh, share the show with others. So until next time, I'm not going to go individually. I am going to say thank you, Joanne Mercier, Thomas Cernerho, Father Andrew Kinstetter, Father Corey Stika, Jack Barazzini, and Pat Scott. Thank you for joining me in continuing to share the secrets of technology. Once again, I'm Dom Bettinelli. Thank you for listening to the Secrets of Technology on StarQuest. <laughs>